Well, we've heard this story before, but it bears repeating. We know about it because the man to whom it happened wrote it down, as did that great father church, St. Gregory Nazianzen. The Empress Eudocia wrote about this, and there are at least two other contemporary books written about this event. Short versions can also be found in the old version of Butler's Lives of the Saints or in St. Alphonse's book on the victories of the martyrs. Cyprian was born in the third century in Syria. To say he wasn't raised in a good Catholic home is to put it mildly. As an infant, he was consecrated by his parents to the devil. He's brought up and trained in the mysteries of idolatry, astrology, and black magic. He traveled to Greece, Macedonia, Egypt, Babylon, and India, all with the explicit intention of becoming a master in the black arts. There was no practice too hideous for him to undertake. He was known to have killed children, gathered their blood, in order to offer it up as a sacrifice to the demons. He made such progress in the black arts that he became the most infamous black magician in the pagan world of his day, and one can imagine that must have taken some doing. Now, Justina was a breathtakingly beautiful young woman who was also raised by pagan parents. But one day, she heard a Catholic deacon preach. It struck her. She got the faith. She converted. And in the process, she brought her parents into the true faith as well. After her conversion, she consecrated herself to God by a vow of holy virginity. She is leading a pious Catholic life in this pagan society when she caught the eye of a young pagan nobleman named Agladius. Now, Agladius was absolutely enthralled by Justina's beauty, and he tried everything he could think of to persuade her to become his wife. There was nothing doing. She'd already taken a vow of virginity. Attempt after attempt met with complete failure. Finally, in desperation, Agladius turned to Cyprian, and asked him to cast a spell on Justina so that she would fall in love with him. Now, as a parenthetical remark, these kind of spells don't affect love. Love is in the will. Devils don't have access to our will. Devils do have access to the passions and imagination. So a spell like that, at best, has nothing to do with love, but may have something to do with lust. End of parenthetical remarks. Cyprian uses all his magical arts in vain. And Justina soon realized she's under satanic attack. And so she protected herself. How? The sign of the cross, prayers and fasting, and begging the Blessed Virgin to come to the rescue of another virgin who was in distress. As Cyprian himself noted, quote, this is Cyprian, she armed herself with the sign of Christ, and overcame the invocations of the demons, close quote, Cyprian the sorcerer. Cyprian, having seen Justina, fell in love with her himself, and he redoubled his efforts to conquer, casting spell after spell, using every secret that he knew, but it was all in vain. In frustration, he summoned up a demon and demanded to know what was going on. Why weren't these spells successful? The demon very reluctantly answered, Justina was rendered invincible by the God of the Christians. What? Cyprian replied, he's more powerful than you. If the God of the Christians is more powerful than you, then I'll serve him. The devil was absolutely enraged to lose someone by whom he had destroyed so many souls by whom he'd led so many of his souls to perdition, so he began attacking Cyprian. And everybody should be familiar with the method the devil used, because he always uses the same kind of methods. He did what he always does. He trotted out all those old sins and started dangling them in front of Cyprian's eyes. All these memories of the horrible crimes that Cyprian was guilty of, all the while saying, there's no hope for you. You're just scum off the surface of a pond. You're doomed to hell. Look at everything you've done. No one like you can escape damnation. Oh, holiness, that's for saints and priests. But you, it's impossible for you, you sinner. 
the devil was just doing his thing, trying to tempt Cyprian to despair, to give up, to quit. But in the midst of all this, Cyprian received an inspiration to visit a former schoolmate of his, a man named Eusebius, who during the years that Cyprian had been studying the infernal arts, had been studying something quite different. See, Eusebius' boyhood friend, or Cyprian's boyhood friend, was now called Father Eusebius. And Father Eusebius guided Cyprian in his conversion. Early one Sunday morning, Father took Cyprian with him to see the bishop and the priests who were singing the divine office of laws. To say that the bishop and other clergy were astonished to see this sorcerer in the company of a priest coming to laws is to put it mildly. The bishop had very grave reservations about the sincerity of Cyprian's conversion, but the next day, when Cyprian brought all his magical books and items and burnt them before the bishop's eyes, gave away all his belongings to the poor, and enrolled himself as a catechumen, the bishop realized he was serious. After a thorough, a very thorough catechesis, Cyprian was baptized and confirmed by the bishop. St. Gregory Nazianz, in that doctor of the church, writes of the incredible change in Cyprian, how he became so humble, so modest, so edifying and serious about holiness, and about loving God and despising the riches of the world, and how he converted so many other idolaters. He begged to be given the permission to sweep up at the church. Over time, he became a doorkeeper. Then he was ordained to the priesthood. And he wound up being consecrated as a bishop. Cyprian the sorcerer, a bishop. Now, when the persecution of Diocletian broke out, Cyprian was rounded up and taken to the governor of Phoenicia in Tyre. And his divine providence had it. Cyprian, the bishop, a former sorcerer who, because of the example of the beautiful virgin Justina, had turned away from a life of total depravity and crime this evil, evil life, had turned away from that and embraced the true faith, Cyprian the bishop was sent to the governor for the crime of being a Catholic and ended up in front of the same judge on the same day as another Catholic, the Virgin Justina. She was scourged terribly. He was torn with iron hooks. They were both sent in chains to Nicomedia where Diocletian was residing. After Diocletian read the letter from the governor of Phoenicia, he ordered their heads to be struck off. As they were being led out of town for the execution of the sentence, another Catholic spoke to Cyprian, and for this was beheaded on them, with them, on September 26, 304, 1,701 years ago tomorrow. Their relics are now in the Lateran Basilica in Rome. Cyprian got to join this woman that he loved in death and in heaven. St. Cyprian the Magician and St. Justina enjoying eternal happiness together in heaven. And there's a lot of lessons we can draw from that beautiful story. I'll just mention a few. The more you think of it, the more you'll be able to come up with. The power of the sign of the cross of fasting, of praying, of the intercession of the Most Blessed Virgin to defeat even the strongest attacks of the devil. The shining example of purity, of this irresistible power that St. Justina exercised over those men. Modesty and purity in women have an incredible power over men. They're attracted to it, and at the same time, they find themselves inadequate in the face of it. A modest woman, a pure woman, a good woman, is an examination of conscience to a man. When he looks at her, he gets glimpses. He catches glimpses of the Blessed Virgin shining through her, through her good example. Finally, think about Cyprian. These are words worth meditating on. And keep in mind that these words that I'm about to read were written by a man who's a Catholic saint, a man whose feast day is tomorrow. Quote, Whosoever ye be that are seduced by the mysteries of the demons, none of you can equal the zeal I once had for these false gods, nor my researches into their secrets, nor the vain power 
they communicated to me, to me, Cyprian, who from my infancy was given up to the service of the dragon in the citadel of Minerva. Believe me, I have seen the prince of darkness himself, for I propitiated him by sacrifices. I greeted him and spoke with him and his ancients. He liked me, praised my understanding before everyone said, here's a new Jambres. Jambres was one of Pharaoh's magicians that went up against Moses. Here's a new Jambres, always ready for obedience and worthy of communing with us. And he promised me to make me a prince after my death and for the course of my earthly life to help me in everything. And he gave me a legion of demons to serve me. I gave myself entirely into his service at that time, obeying his every command. Learn from me the deceitfulness of the demons' illusions. A virgin has proved to me that their power is but smoke. The king of the demons was arrested at the door of a mere child and could not throw across the threshold. He who promises so much is a liar. A woman makes sport of the boaster who vaunted he could shake heaven and earth. The roaring lion becomes a startled gnat before the Christian virgin Justina. Close quote. St. Cyprian the magician. A sorcerer. Consecrated to seed, murders children, bleeding them to death in order to offer up their blood to the devils. Look, I don't care who you are and I don't care what you've done. You haven't lived a life like that. It doesn't get any more evil than that. That's the limit. A satanic sorcerer is the limit. And yet, in spite of all that, in spite of all that, God still forgave him. God had mercy on him and forgave him. And he not only forgave him, but he gave him the grace to lead a holy life. And not only to lead a holy life, but he gave him the particular grace of martyrdom. St. Cyprian's soul was in heaven, for his head hit the ground. In heaven, for all eternity, was St. Justina. Think of how much God really loves us. He can forgive a man like Cyprian. Let him be a priest and a bishop and a saint of the Catholic Church. If God can make a saint out of a sinner like Cyprian, think of what he can do with you. If you just let him. God will make you a saint. If you let him. St. Cyprian and Justina 